Welcome to Be the Scandal, the sacred rebellion of being your authentic self. I'm your host, Danny Hickman. I think it's safe to say that most of us have pretty complicated relationships with ourselves and our bodies. Most of us are living what I like to call disembodied lives, just disconnected from who we are, our self-worth, and literally our bodies. I'm excited in this episode to introduce you to my near and dear soul sister, Amy Gartenberg, a psychotherapist and body peace coach based in Nashville, Tennessee. In this episode, Amy is sharing a lot of nuggets of wisdom and insight into how to reconnect with our self-worth, come back home to our bodies, and live a life that is in alignment with your desires. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. Let's jump into my conversation with Amy. Today, I'm really excited because I am welcoming my soul sister, Amy Gartenberg, Mm -hmm. to this podcast today. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited to have this conversation. And you are a psychotherapist and body peace coach. And I just love the energy of that title. I just want to curl up in it. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious. So if you were to share the work that you do in the world, in your own words, how would you describe this work that you're bringing into the world? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I have a psychotherapy private practice here in Nashville, Tennessee. And um, in that practice, I mostly see young adults and adults. And um, we do a lot of eating disorder work and um, transitions and just Um, people really wanting to live a life that is more authentically theirs. Mm -hmm. So that is some, I'm deeply passionate about that work. Um, And then I also love bringing to the world um, coaching as well as a body peace coach. And in that work, um, I'm really working with people that want to heal their their relationship with food and their body. And um, perhaps that comes from, messaging they received from their family growing up. Perhaps it's just some negative internal dialogue they have going on. Um, But for whatever reason, they feel very disconnected from their bodies and Mm -hmm. have used a lot of force around food and exercise to try to control that. And um, so we use um, healing the relationship with food and body as kind of an avenue or tool to live a more authentically aligned life. Mm, I love that. (laughs) Again, I just want to curl up into it. And honestly, I feel like that title, like a body piece coach, I think I first heard it from you, you know, when you were sharing what you were doing in the world. And so I'm curious, like, how did you start with this work or what led you to this path? Because this is a really specific set of people that you're working with? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. And I mean, really, I think it was my own healing journey in this work. Um, And goodness. So I think when I was kind of like mid twenties, my life looked very different than what I wanted it to look like. And so that's, you know, that's being held in one area. And then also, I had a really disordered relationship with food and body. And um, a lot of that has to do with the culture that I grew up in, in my family, and just thinking, um, like monitoring food and exercising excessively, like those things are really normal. Mm-hmm. And um, when the life that I was living that didn't feel like mine kind of came to a breaking point, it was also kind of at the height of these disordered behaviors. And so, um, ah, gosh, I wish I could know how, like, there was a click in my mind of like, Mm -hmm. "Mm, I don't know if this is working anymore, but um, somehow, like, I got that message and I started working with a coach who really helped me heal my own relationship with food. And what's the coolest thing about that, I think, is like, yeah, we think that we're working on f- with food and just not dieting anymore or like learning to appreciate our bodies, but it's just this window into the life that you actually want to live. And I found that like once I healed those things, it was like those things were these 
this giant distraction. Um, so I didn't have to actually think about what I wanted to be doing in life. And so once I healed those parts, um, my life just changed drastically. And so that experience just made me realize that, like, I don't know, that, like, if we can heal that part, if we can heal that huge distraction, we can open up, like, so much more for ourselves. There's so much that you said that deeply resonated with me and my journey. And I know that that for a lot of people that are probably listening, Mm -hmm. the energy of what you just spoke into will resonate with them. And like the first Mm -hmm. thing I want to speak to is that moment where (laughs) I'm sure it's like a combination of multiple moments, but it does Mm -hmm. feel like there's a turning point in our lives in these moments where it's like, oh, wait, what I'm doing isn't working. This isn't Mm -hmm. the way that I want to move through the world. And then you kind of spoke Mm -hmm. to this about, the truth of the moment, we have to be present and that like the way we're moving through the world isn't working. And it's Mm -hmm. just really interesting, the language that you're using in that distraction, Mm -hmm. you know, and Mm -hmm. not, I mean, focusing on supporting ourselves in those things where there is disorder and dysfunction, but also going deeper and looking at how did I get here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's big. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I mean, I was kind of writing some things down when you were talking that triggered a thought but that um the idea of like oh this isn't working what was odd about that time was that from the outside it was working like the most it's ever worked you know yeah. like I was in probably the smallest body I've ever been in I was about to be engaged to a really great person like there were a lot of things that it was just like wow I was living in California you know and I just, I want to name that because it doesn't, it doesn't really matter how something looks on the outside. And that I think, oh my gosh, that's a hard lesson to learn um, because I could live that life and just internally know this isn't working for me. Yeah. Gosh. Well, and how many of us are living lives like that, right? We're on the Mm -hmm. outside, depending on who's looking, it looks like it is right in line with what we desire, right? And people can be on the outside looking in and say, what, you have a great life. Why, you know, are you struggling or assume that we're not struggling when on the inside, it just feels like that. I like to call it the slow death of self. Like it just feels Mm -hmm. like we're slowly dying on the inside. Um, Mm -hmm. And as I say that, I'm thinking, is that too dramatic? Or does that feel like that is what that felt like in that time period? Oh, yeah. Like I would say that's like, that was deep, deep grief. Because Mm. I mean, I think I had thought that I wanted that for so long. You know, it's kind of like climbing a top of a mountain, so to speak. And then like getting there and being like, oh, this is the wrong mountain. <laughs> this, is, this isn't what I wanted, you know? And so there was definitely a lot of grief there and um, and also body grief, right? Like yeah. as I started to heal my relationship with my body, my body changed and like that, like grieving that, um, I mean, that was its own, its own journey too, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It just makes me think of like the grief related to no longer being that person that you once were, or that person you thought you should be, you know, and being present with who you are while also being aware of who you're wanting to be. But there is just mm. so much transition and grief in that space for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So this might feel like a big question, but it's the one that's popping up for me right now is if someone, like if they're listening and they're like, yes, this resonates, you know, I want to learn how do I come back to my body? How do I reconnect with myself? How do I get on that trajectory of living more in alignment? Like, where would you recommend would be the place to start in this particular work? Mm, I really like that question. Um. I think the first thing is that you have to get honest with yourself. And I'm, I'm sure that sounds really cliche, but it's. Oh, <laughs> I hate the answer, to be honest. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like when I was about to go through that, those changes, like 
I tried to deny that for so long. Like I tried to deny that the relationship wasn't working. I tried to deny that I had a pretty messed up relationship with food at the time, you know, because again, like if we like society probably wouldn't have said I had a messed up relationship with food, right? Like it was just like dieting. We all diet, you know, like so I had to, yeah, it's the culture. And so I had to get honest about the fact that that wasn't working for me. And, um, and that was really hard. That took, that took a lot longer probably than I wanted it to take and, um, to trust yourself, right? Because what's going to happen is when you start making those changes, it's going to trigger, um, parts in other people that have not healed that. And that can be very difficult. So, um, just trusting yourself through that process. And I wrote myself like notes, like beforehand, like that I could go back to, like, Amy, like this isn't working. This is how you know it's not working. Like Mm. this is, you know, so Mm. then when I was, when I was like receiving all of these critiques kind of from people in my life or like, why are you doing this? Or like, this doesn't make any sense to me. I could go back and read that. And that felt reassuring. Um, Mm. So that's a good thing. I think finding a coach or a therapist that can support you is really, really huge. Mm-hmm. Um, I almost think about when you're starting this journey, it's like you're a, like a delicate, a delicate little flower or something like something very, very precious. Like your relationship with food and your body at the beginning is incredibly p- precious, this new relationship. Mm-hmm. So any time that you are with people that are going to like send more diet messages or body critiques or like telling you not to listen to your intuition. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a poison to this, you know? Mm -hmm. So we want to try to surround ourselves with supportive people that are going to be our cheerleaders and Mm -hmm. help us grow. So that might be friends. It might be a coach or a therapist or connecting with someone was really huge. Yeah. Well, and I, what comes up for me right now is, are those letters that you wrote to yourself and like how that links to trusting yourself and how you can also be that support for you. What, you know, cause you writing those notes, what comes to me is like, it's you and your highest self, right? Like mm-hmm. you and your aligned adult, you that is writing those notes. And I just love that having that anchor, even within yourself, but yes, finding that support system, those people that can support you in this journey, because it is this delicate thing as you're really anchoring into the work and Mm -hmm. into yourself. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's super delicate and we have to protect it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I think you're kind of going here and I want to really just like take us there. Yeah. (laughs) But I mean, you mentioned a few times about, you know, diet culture, I'm going to use my words, but cultural programming, conditioning, Mm -hmm. and mention like how shifting the way you're moving through the world, if you have been in, you know, that world can really elicit reactions from other people. And other people have a lot of opinions on the way we're living Mm -hmm. our life and what we're doing, Mm -hmm. and especially within our families and those people we're close to. So I'm just curious if you can speak more into that, about that programming and conditioning within our culture and within our family and how that impacts this work. Mm-hmm. I'm going to see what's coming up for me right now. I mean, there's so much. Mm. Mm. I think, gosh, I think that, that it is such people's relationship with um, food and with their bodies. It's like, I'm going to put a big generalization. It's like in- incredibly wounded. I think as a culture, I think there's so much wounding there. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I believe that just really comes from wanting to be loved. I mean, I think that deep down the desire to diet or change your body or fight against your body is just so that we can have the love that we want. Like, okay, if I look this way, like I'll get this love or like, um, for me, like my family um, gives a lot of attention when someone is like at a really high fitness level, right? And it's like, oh gosh, like really excitement for that. And so 
to make a decision that I'm not going to play into that anymore. I mean, that it, it touches the wounding in other people too, right? Like it's like, it, it ignites a sphere of, gosh, what's going to happen to you if you do that, you know? Yeah. And it also, um, it touches that wound in them that has an unhealed relationship with their body. Right? Mm. Yeah. I just want to name this. Like I feel sadness right now, just as you're speaking mm. into that. Mm-hmm. And when I tune in, I feel like it's sadness for younger parts of me, you know, and mm. also for other people too. I mean, because we're talking about worthiness, love, acceptance, our sense of self, you know, and mm-hmm. relating to one another and feeling safe and connected. I mean, all of this is wrapped up in these things and it's just so deep and I just Mm -hmm. I just feel it in my body right now yeah yeah I feel it too like I feel my eyes watering a little because it is it's deeply deeply sad and um yeah and there are there are younger parts of us that are so wounded by this and I believe that's one of the reasons that diet culture or cultural programming has such a hold on us is because it's not just, it doesn't have a hold on us like as an adult. I mean, it might partially, but I think more so it has a hold on the younger parts of us, you know, that receive some kind of messaging Mm -hmm. around, you need to look this way or like even gosh, like bonding with a parent by going on a diet with them Mm -hmm. or all of those things. Right. And so a lot of the work that I do while it involves, you know, intuitive eating tools, we're mostly really working on repairing those relationships with younger parts and, um, and helping and hearing their story and hearing their woundings. Mm. Yeah. I was thinking of this before we hopped on to record. I was just thinking about, you know, my family system and I had a moment where I remembered my maternal grandmother always dieting, always talking about her weight you know, and then my mom would do it. And then when we would start, I have two sisters, when we would start talking like that, you know, and I can't think of a moment in time. I just think of the energy. My mom would say, you don't need to do that. You know, so it was a really confusing messaging where it was like this Mm -hmm. almost like body acceptance within my family system, but we were watching these matriarchs in our family that were really struggling with it. And so that was just something that came up for me today when I was prepping for us to connect, I thought, oh, how confusing for that younger part of me, you mm-hmm. know? And then of course, like we have society and that programming coming in on from the outside, but I just felt like that was important to name, you know, that was something within my system that was confusing. Yeah. I'm glad you named that because it is, it's like, it's linear trauma, like lineage, you know, it's your lineage. And, and I really only believe like, I believe that we can only start where our parents ended with something, you know, and that like, and so if our parents had a really, I don't know, like intense relationship with their food or body or very critical, then that's the place that we're starting. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. And so then when we, when we receive other messages, it's really confusing. It's like, but I love my mom and she does it this way. And, you know. Yeah. But she's telling me not to do it in that same way. And it's like, wait, what? How do I connect with you? Right? How do I stay safe? Because our parents, you know, our family system, those people we're closest to are showing us, right? We're watching all the time as littles. Like, how do I stay safe and connected? And so we get some this programming and this messaging, whether it's conscious or not, because we're watching. And these younger parts of us sometimes I would say all the time, but like are stuck in these old programs and we are not even consciously aware of it as adults. Mm -hmm. So interesting. Yeah. It's yeah. Because when you're a kid, you think your parents know everything. You think like they, (laughs) they have everything figured out. Right. So like, of course, like, of course it makes sense that we want to follow with, with their relationship with food or body might be, Mm -hmm. even if that's not going to be what's going to be most serving to us. 
Yeah. Well, and what's coming up right now is like a lot of people that I work with when we're having these kinds of conversations and they're adults now, but this programming is still very present in their family as adults. So it's that push pull Mm -hmm. of like, okay, I'm trying to change this way that I'm moving through the world, the way that I perceive myself and I perceive my body and I'm trying to be connected, but this messaging and programming is still very real and present within my family system. And it's like, where do I fit in now? Like, how do I connect with my family and myself in relationship to them? It's really interesting. And I'm curious your thoughts on that. Yeah. Oh yeah. As you're talking, I'm like, "Mm -hmm, mm -hmm." Um, (laughs) I think, yes. I mean, that's a, that's a level of that grief. I mean, that was really hard for me. I remember that so well, because that was how a lot of, um, I, is how I bonded with a lot of members of my family was talking about food or exercise or weight loss. Like it just, it was so much a part of my cult, like the culture of my house growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I started to move away from that, I definitely felt like I lost pieces of, of, of relationships um, with my family members. And, um, and that was really difficult. And even, I remember even like setting a boundary of, I don't want to talk about like diets. I don't want that talk around me right now. Just Mm -hmm. because like I was saying, this delicate flower that needs to be protected right? and that being really confusing to my family, you Mm -hmm. know, and it is, it's like, it's a both and I think it, it, it triggers something in them, right? This, this wound that they also carry. And also there's the grief part of that relationship is now going to change. Well, and I think of that phrase, the truth of the moment, right? Like being present in that truth and having Mm -hmm. compassion for those family members, right? And like empathy of like, oh, of course, this would be coming up within you while also, supporting mm-hmm. ourselves and seeing the truth, grieving what comes up because of this truth and mm-hmm. supporting ourselves in those boundaries. Cause no one's going to maintain those boundaries, but us. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it, that is, it feels like a juggling, like a balancing act mm-hmm. just as I name yeah. all of those things, you know, and you name them. It's like, yeah, that's a, a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. And it's, I think it's especially a lot because usually we've been doing these things for such a long time. Yeah. You know, it's just like that the relationship maybe that we've had with like parents or a sibling has looked a certain way for a long time. Mm-hmm. So when we change ourselves on such a deep level like that, um, it can, I don't, it's big. It's really, really big. Yeah. But I will say like, on the other side, it's like so beautifully worth it. <laughs> I was going to yes. ask you, hey, <laughs> can we go to that part? Because even, I'll be honest, when we were first talking about body piece, like coaching, I uh-huh. thought, oh, I mean, I said this, I'm like, oh, that feels really good. And then I had a thought where I was like, oh, just those words together probably are really triggering for people, just like yeah. placing those two words together. And so I am curious, like, why big question, but like, why would we invest in this work? Like, why is it important to Mm. work through this programming and to explore like what's underneath some of my disordered eating, right. Or my behavioral habits that just aren't working. Like, why would we invest in it? Mm. Ah, like, cause I mean, I wouldn't be like, cause your life will never be the same. Like (laughs) is my, is my big answer. Yeah. I Um, love that answer. Yeah. (laughs) But I do believe that. I believe that, um, that our fixation on food and body, like, especially as women, um, is a distraction to other things in our lives that we don't want to look at or the fact that maybe we are, we are in a place in our life, we're living a life that we're like, how did I get here? You know, and if we can focus on food and body, then we're not gonna, um, we're not gonna have to face that, you know, we just get to like stay in our control mindset. So I think if you're ready to live a life that feels like so deliciously yours, then you've got to invest in it. I mean, when you're ready, but like, like, it's just, 
I really believe like if I could have told my younger self what my life looks like now, I don't even think I would have believed it. Like I'm just, Mm -hmm. I'm in such a different place and the things and experiences in my life, I feel like are authentically mine and things that I chose and feel good to me. And what's really cool is like my family has kind of come along for the ride. I mean, like (laughs) in their own time and in their own way, but um, like, I think specifically about my relationship with my mom and um, like that was a really big bonding thing for us was talking about food and exercise. Mm -hmm. And now it's really cool. I mean, this is like almost, I don't know, like maybe seven years later, but she is really starting to heal that within herself too, which is like so cool. And um, I don't know, like even, um, who my partner is now, like now I'm in a deep commit committed relationship with a woman, whereas before I had been dating men. And I think, you know, my family got to come along for that journey too. Right. And, um, learn and ex- expand their acceptance. And so it is, it's like when we heal, when we heal this within ourselves, we open up to a life we couldn't have even imagined for ourselves that's going to feel so yummy and then also like we're healing that lineage you know like my my parents get to have some of that healing too which makes me so happy Mm. yeah the energy of that just feels so good Mm -hmm. and I just think I say this a lot with people I work with, you know, when we're doing this work and we're choosing to say no more, you know, no more for me and no more for like engaging with it, with our family system. Like we are, and it's experiential, right? Like it's hard to explain the changes that happen within us. We just know, Mm -hmm. oh, I'm more anchored in myself. Oh, I am moving through the world more authentically, you know? So Mm -hmm. we feel that within, but also we are shifting that family line, whether people are actively making changes or not, like within our family system, within our friends, within those people we're interacting with, we are creating change and we're giving them permission to do that work too when they feel ready. And it's so Mm -hmm. interesting, that ripple effect. Mm -hmm. It's just a beautiful unfolding. That's why I love this work, it is hard. I'm going to use this word. It's hard to be the scandal, right? It's hard to be the one that is saying, oh, I'm going to go over here while everyone else is over there. But it is so liberating when you get anchored into this energy of being yourself and being true to yourself because people take notice. People are like, wait, she's really happy right now. And it's like authentically happy. Oh, she's really embodied. I want some of that. It's contagious. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it is like, you know, this because, you know, we've worked together, but um, I am like, I feel like the queen of white, white knuckling something like I am like, I so badly don't want to be the scandal, you know, like, oh, it's just like, that. I'm like, no, like, and I'll <laughs> hang on like as long as I can possibly hang on and until I can't anymore. Right. Like until it's really actually affecting my physical health. And then when I finally let go, you know, whether it be healing relationship with food or body or any other life decisions, it just feels so good, you know, and ah, yeah, it's not to say it's not difficult, but it feels good in this way you can't even describe. Yeah. Well, and I'm going to make a sweeping generalization, but (laughs) as also a white knuckler of like, I'm not going to look at this truth. I don't need to change. I'll just keep doing it. Like our systems respond to that, right? Like you already just named it like physically, spiritually, emotionally, like we die that slow death, you know? And I just feel like Mm -hmm. we're living with a lack of integrity, that inner desire is not matching how we're moving through the world. And that moment that we let go we show ourselves, we show our younger parts that, hey, we can handle whatever comes up. We can process all of the emotional pain that comes with letting go and being different and forging our own path and like letting go of programming. And we're really Mm -hmm. anchoring into ourselves and there's so much power. And then it gets easier. Well, uh, for those listening, (laughs) I'm going to do quotes here. I'll say easier. Um, (laughs) 
<laughs> I feel it, it does. I think our threshold for it gets bigger and we're able to widen that window of tolerance to process the pain that does come, the grief that you've mentioned multiple times with this work, but it's so beautiful that unfolding. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And it's like, I feel called to name this to you right now is like so much of that white knuckling is like, I'm always terrified of like how other people are going to react to this, right? Like what are other people going to think? What are the other people going to say about me? And like, I had this shift in thinking um, that actually like the, the coach that I had worked with, um, I was connecting with her about something and she gave me these words that were like so beautiful that like, if we can hold things um, gently and loosely, right? Like then we can allow others to hold us that way too, you know? So it's like, if I can hold this other, like other version of myself that I once was gently and loosely and let her fly away, you know, like just let it be what it is. It gives other people permission to do that too the more easeful we can be in the process, I genuinely believe um, we can see that easefulness in other people. Mm -hmm. I I love that. And it just makes me think of that energy that we're meeting ourselves in and putting out and we're going to get that back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that feels good. Yeah. Yeah. I just loved those words of like gently and loosely. And that just feels Mm -hmm. really good in my body of yeah, can we just let it flow and let it be? Yeah, I feel drawn to say that also feels good in my body. That's not my typical unconscious go-to when moments like this happen. <laughs> I'm like, uh, you know, I have to control it, you know, and I get really rigid, but just, ooh, that permission to let it be easeful. Like yeah. how good can it feel? How easy can it be to transition into a different way of being, to change our behaviors, to release our programming? Just as we're talking about it, like I'm moving my hands, like we mm-hmm. can invite in that ease and gentleness and we deserve that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. And like you can have that gentleness with your body too. You know, like you can have that calm, loose, gentle relationship with your body and it's instead of the white knuckling one Mm -hmm. yeah what I'm curious if there's anything that comes up for you like how can someone start that like I think of it like the words I'll use is coming back to your body in a gentle way Mm -hmm. because we do a lot of self-harming behaviors Mm -hmm. that we wouldn't maybe categorize as self-harm but Mm -hmm. they're definitely self-harming you know just the way we Mm -hmm. talk to ourselves the way we, I mean, gosh, the way we eat and then physically self-harming. I mean, there's so many different facets of self-harming. So like, how do we start coming back to ourselves in a place of like gentleness, love, grace? Is there any techniques or anything that comes to mind right now? Yeah. I think two things really come to mind for me. First is like, is this was my mantra, especially when I was feeling my relationship with exercise was like separate first, like before, before we come back together, mind and body, like we need to separate ourselves first. Mm -hmm. So it was the idea, like I almost had to think of my body as like a totally separate entity or like um, a child that I needed to attend to. Right. So Mm -hmm. like my mind, I think like my mind asking my physical body, like what kind of movement feels good today you know, and, and that separation helped me just like listen to my body without overanalyzing it or like my brain coming back in. Mm -hmm. So that language of like separate first, and then, and then as we heal, we'll come back together. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that's really helpful. Um, the other piece is like, this is such a process of trial and error. And like, there's going to be the perfectionist part of you that's like, am I doing it right? Like, am I listening to myself? Right. I think my body said I wanted to go for a walk, but now I don't know, you know, and, um, I just try to advise my clients to trust the trial and error. Like we have been, um, shutting down that intuitive voice for so long, Mm -hmm. um, or or shutting down that body voice for so long Mm -hmm. that, um, it's voice right now is really small and we're going to try our best to listen 
So when it says like, when you think it's saying, let's go for a walk, um, we're going to try and see and get some feedback about that. And as we even just try to listen, the more we try to listen, the louder that voice will become and, and the more clear it will become what your body's asking for. Mm. I'm having that sadness come up again in this mm-hmm. moment. And I just hearing you speak to these things, these are things that I've done and I've kind of fell into them. <laughs> you know, I didn't have a coach mm-hmm. or someone to walk me through it. And it just, oh, I don't, I, I can't tell what kind of sadness it is right now, but it's just that emotion is there, but it is also like, oh, man, yeah, I was able to do that, you know, and just the freedom. I think I'm experiencing just hearing that of like, yeah, how do we nourish our bodies? How do we ask ourselves, what do you need right now, Vessel? Are you hungry? Mm-hmm. Are you tired? Do you want to mm-hmm. move? And how do you want to move? And it doesn't need to be this intense workout. It could be a walk. It could be yoga. It could be just laying on the ground and resting. It could be taking mm-hmm. a nap, you know, all of these things, drinking water, you know, mm-hmm. all of these things that a lot of us aren't doing because we're so disconnected or aren't even asking, Hey, what do I need right now? We're not checking in with ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And like, that's like, that's almost the separate piece first. Right. Is if we have, we have to really think about it in a way that we've never thought about it before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love what you said about imagining as if it were a child, because that's how I would support people in that work too. I would say, Hey, if you were parenting a five-year-old and they were tired, would we just say, well, keep going. We have a lot of work to do. Or they were hungry. Mm -hmm. You know, would we say, well, we're on a diet. We're not eating. We can't eat till 5 PM, you know, Mm -hmm. or really restrictive, or would we shame them for having these needs and an attuned conscious caregiver would never do that to a kiddo. And so we want to offer that same energy and grace to our own bodies. And I just love that you presented that invitation because that's a great way to anchor into that compassion and gentleness. Cause I'm way nicer to kids than adults. <laughs> I mean, a, yeah. lot of, you know, a lot of times with adults, we're like, okay, get your shit together. Come on. Yeah. You know, get uh-huh. all those little kiddos. We're all just little kiddos. Right. Right. And like, that's why I think um, the inner child work is so important mm-hmm. with this work because there is, there's a younger version of you that needs some love around this, right? That, re- that received some really difficult messages. And so now we're just going to reparent in a really loving, supportive way. Mm-hmm. And I just think of the liberation to choose now as an adult, how we want to reparent ourselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I felt big to say, I feel the energy of that. Like we have to Mm -hmm. use that. We don't have to continue engaging in these patterns that we have been handed down or that have been handed to us. And we've taken to stay safe and connected. Like we don't have to do that anymore. We can choose. How do we want to parent ourselves? Yeah. I know. It's really cool. I know. I know you and I both love inner child work. So <laughs> this is a plug for that type of psychotherapy and work. Gosh, it just changed my life. Yeah. So I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it can like it's like oh, there's so much momentum behind it. It just I think that when you reconnect with a part that you haven't spent time with before, it gets like, ooh, it can just really propel your healing in this mm-hmm. awesome, awesome way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm curious. I'm going to invite you to just check in with yourself. We have Mm -hmm. talked about a lot of, I'm going to use your words, delicious and yummy topics, because I (laughs) noticed that I observed the words you were using. I was like, Ooh, I love the language that you're Mm -hmm. using. I'm Mm -hmm. just curious. Is there more you want to speak into or name or feels like it wants to come through in this Mm -hmm. moment? Let me see. I would say like what, what feels like it wants to come through me right now is it's okay if you hear this podcast and you feel equally intrigued and terrified. Mm. I think that is a natural response. Um, and I think I just want to name that for anyone that hears this and mm-hmm. is like, this sounds really good, but also like, oh my God, I'm so afraid of if I do this, what that will mean for my life. 
So I just want to say, like, I hear you. I see you. I've been there. And um, when you're ready, you'll you'll take the first step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for speaking into that. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And I think sometimes we think both can't exist, right? Like Mm -hmm. either I'm like all in or I'm terrified I'm shutting down. And actually this period and moment in time when both exist is a really great time to get curious right? And to get that information and to notice and to even just notice some parts of you are like, oh yeah, I want to lean into it. Other parts like no way. Cause then we know how to support, you know, the moment. So I just love that you named that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Yeah. I just, that was so good that, yeah, just notice which which parts of you are really excited and curious and which parts are terrified, right? That will give some good information. Mm-hmm. And I know we're just like pinging back and forth, but I just think <laughs> to say, of course you're terrified. Uh-huh. How can you not be? I mean, our conversation today and this recording is about shifting the way that you've been moving through the world and changing the way that you're relating to yourself and other people. That is terrifying. Yeah. You know, yeah. to varying degrees. It's edgy. You can feel like, ooh, I don't know. I've never experienced that before. And of course, like your system doesn't know it. So that's part of the yeah. process and journey too. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Amy, if someone wants to connect with you, what are the best ways to connect with you outside of this episode? Yeah. Um, you can go to my website, which is amygartenberg.com. And if you're curious about coaching or um, counseling opportunities, all that information is there. Um, and you can reach out to me there. And you can also connect with me on Instagram. My handle is Amy Lynn LPC. Mm, yeah, that's easy to remember. <laughs> yeah, quick, quick and easy to the point. <laughs> yeah. And you, you can find this info in the show notes. And thank you so much, Amy, for sharing your wisdom and your time and just your energy with us today. Oh, thank you so much for holding the space, Danny. Mm. I'm always so happy to talk with you. So this was wonderful. And it was also delicious and yummy. So thank you. Yeah, I love, I know I already said this, but I just love <laughs> that language. Thank you for inviting uh, that language in. Mm. Yes, oh, my pleasure. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Be The Scandal. If you like what you heard, don't forget to click subscribe so that you can join in on the sacred rebellion of being your most authentic self.